Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are making a sourdough king's cake. I cannot wait to eat some of this. It is gonna be so tasty. We are going to brighten our cake up a little bit by adding lots of tacky green, purple, and yellow food coloring. So stay tuned and watch this amazing episode. And if you have it, please subscribe below. We are starting with two cups of all-purpose flour in our bowl, and we're adding one cup of active sourdough starter. We are also going to add in one cup, quarter cup of water and one warm cup of milk. We're gonna stir this up and we're gonna let it sit for 30 minutes. All right, 30 minutes is up. We can see some bubbles in there, some fermentation is going on, a little auto lease happened. And now we're going to add one egg, a third a cup of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, and a quarter cup of butter. We are gonna get this all stirred and blended together before we add the rest of our flour. Now it's time to add our remaining two cups of flour. I chose to use bread flour for these last two cups, but you can easily just use all-purpose flour. I'm doing an experiment and seeing what happens. That's it. Add the flour a little at a time until it's all combined. Okay, so dough seems a little sticky to me. I think I'm gonna have to add a little more flour. Um, there's no way I can roll this out right now. I'm adding two tablespoons of flour to see what happens. You see I have my dough hook in, and my dough should be pulling off the side some. I don't want it in a ball. I kinda want it to look like a tornado. This dough should be wet. That two tablespoons is mixed in, and you can see it's not still what I need. So I'm putting two more tablespoons in, and I'm hoping that it'll just look like that tornado, and the bottom of my bowl will not have that blob down there. So we just got to see if this works, and uh, looks like it is. Okay, now we've got what I need to have happen. See how it looks like a tornado? That's exactly what we want. We are ready to put our dough into a container. I just got this new container and it's got measurements on it. It's just so nice to have so I can tell if something's doubled, if something's risen 30%. Awesome. Okay, let's check this out. It's been 30 minutes. You can see the humidity in there. See the humidity? Oh, it's so nice to have a lid finally. Okay. I'm not seeing like much growth, but I am seeing air bubbles form. And now we're going to do um, four pulls for this. Okay, this is, container is gonna be a, how to even open it? There we go. This container is gonna be a little bit hard to show you how to do a stretch and pull, but you're just gonna take four, four sides of a circle, right? That makes sense. Just gonna pull, pull it up and then push it towards it. So it's a little harder to do in here. One, our dough is sticky, guys. I still may have to use a little bit more flour when I eventually roll it, and that's okay. One more. And then let's try to flip her. <laughs> I can't flip. There, well, okay. Oh, it's, it feels beautiful. I can't believe I've been doing bread for this long and never had a nice container like this. Okay. All right, our second 30 minute is up. We do have a little rise going and some bubble work there. After your dough has risen for two hours with 30 minute intervals of that stretching and pulling technique, you can put your dough in the fridge overnight. That's the beauty of this dough. Let it ferment overnight and then work on it the next morning. Okay, it's the next morning. We have pulled our dough out of the fridge for another rise of about 30%. 
we're going to mix together our cinnamon sugar. So we have a quarter cup of butter melted, half a cup of white sugar, half a cup of brown sugar, and one tablespoon of cinnamon. Get that all mixed together. Here's my dough straight from the fridge. And within three and a half hours, I was able to get a rise of 30%. I love this container. Okay, we are gonna put a nice layer of flour down. Remember, my dough was quite wet. Um, humidity in Florida might play a role for that. So I had to add extra flour already, a quarter cup. Okay, this has risen to 30%. Oh, it's beautiful. You can see big bubbles. Using the half of um, bread flour and half regular flour, that might have also played a role into why my dough was wet, I'm not sure. But this dough, I definitely can tell, has a different consistency. Um, really smooth, really feels good. Little bit longer because we're going to be making it go in a circle not just a crescent we need it a little bit longer spread your filling all over the top of your dough it's not always that easy to spread but you can get it on there and then you're going to add your three quarters cup of toasted pecans and if you have the king's cake baby to put in, which is the little baby Jesus, now is the time, or some people put a bean in. I have chosen not to put a bean or a baby in here because knowing my luck, I'd be the one that would get it, which it's supposed to be good luck, but because I have bad teeth, I would probably bite into it and break another tooth. So, we are not having that in our king's cake, but by all means, it is traditional to put into your king's cake. Roll your dough up, but leave the edge open. Go wet your hands and then press water into that edge seal. This is going to be like a glue and it'll help keep your goodies inside, your cinnamon and sugar and all that from leaking out. And don't forget to poke in the ends also. We don't want anything to leak out the ends as well. Now it's time to transfer onto our sheet pan here. Try to make sure it's all shaped properly. Get that bad boy on there. Oh, this is so beautiful. And we are going to put it in the shape of a crown. It's a king's cake. This is his crown. Seal those ends. Don't worry, they're not going to be seen. And then just shape your dough. Just have it look the way you want. If you want it real even, make sure it's real even. Let rise about an hour to an hour and a half. It does not need to double. Our king's cake is ready to go in. It looks beautiful, definitely has puffed up. I'm probably gonna put three or four scores in it so that it has a place to release some steam and hopefully that'll keep me from having blowouts on the bottom in my seams. And this is gonna bake at 375 for about 25 minutes. Okay, here is our beauty. We do have a little leakage and it is in the place I pinched, darn it. Um, that's all right. The leakage is delicious and a gooey mess. So I think I might just try to make sure it's all over the bottom. Oh, it'll taste so good. So we are going to let this cool on a rack now and then we'll get to our next step. So I must confess that um, I was a little tired after a busy day of baking and doing other things. So I wrapped this up and just had it sit out on the counter all night long. So now it's morning and we're gonna work on our frosting and getting this baby all looking like a Mardi Gras cake with our sugar. This too is a nice frosting consistency for a cake if you want it a little thinner. It's time to frost. Now traditional colors are your yellow, green, and purple for your cake here. This is a king's cake. It's supposed to kind of be like a crown. 
So if you want to wear yours, go ahead. So we are just going to put this over our cake. And remember, this isn't supposed to be a real light substance. We want it this thick. You know, what in New Orleans do they do where it isn't rich and thick and totally fattening, right? <laughs> just ooze it on there. Don't be shy. Oh, wow, it's so pretty. All right, now for the fun part. We'll start, maybe I'll do three of each and try that. We'll start with purple. Look how pretty it's becoming. And don't be shy. Okay, next color. And our last color here is some yellow. Wow. Now, if that doesn't say Mardi Gras, I do not know what does. I am so impressed with myself. Are you ready to cut into this? It's gonna be so tasty. Okay, we're gonna just, we're gonna cut right into a little purple. Oh, it feels good. A little purple. Get a little yellow in there too. Wow. Okay, first things first. We have a beautiful roll here. Uh, this side you see some great nuts. The top is so cute. Um, the bottom has a, that nice cinnamon and sugar that, that leaked out is on the bottom. This looks exactly how it is supposed to look. Now let's give her a try. What a great breakfast. What a great dessert. What a great breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Man, cooked all the way through. Wow, this is spectacular. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks For You. Please try this recipe, make this amazing king's cake. And I would love for you to subscribe to my channel below. Click that red button click the bell next to it and you'll get notified when I post things and give me a thumbs up or a comment. I hope you have a great day.